Hey guys, welcome back. So I have an awesome customer of mine that I've dealt with in the past. He has requested that I build him a steampunk poker table. Now he's pretty much gave me all the creative freedom that I want. He just needs it to set eight people and he needs it to be a long style poker table, not the round or octagon style. So I'm gonna take this oak piece of plywood that I picked up and I'm going to transform it into a steampunk poker table. Hopefully, I've never built a poker table before. So this is gonna be a whole new experience. Now for those of y'all that have been following me for a long time, you know I normally don't draw up plans. I just go off the cuff and let ideas come to me and build stuff that way. This one I actually drew up plans for. I know, it's completely new, right? How many of y'all just paused it and went back a little bit just to make sure that's what I said? Yep, Dean, the furniture artist, drew up plans for the first time in his life. <laughs> but I did draw up plans. Part of it was to be able to show the customer just to make sure that we're both thinking the same thing and I wanted to have an idea of what I was gonna do because I've never built a poker table before in my life. I don't even play poker, so I had to do a little bit of research, measurement, sizes, get some ideas, but I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. As you can already tell, in my small workspace, this massive of a piece, I've got the camera as far back as I can get it right now, so I'm going to try to film as much of this as I can for y'all, but man, we really need a bigger shop. We are steadily working on it as the interest rates are steadily going up and the home prices are still crazy high, but we are working on it. We are trying to get a bigger shop because that is my biggest limitation right now is just space. All right, it's already 109 outside, so I'm sure it's over 120 in here already. I need to try to get as much done today as I can before I get too hot. All right, let's get to work. All right, here's a couple of things that I picked up for the build. A little worried about this one because they folded it not too terribly bad but it definitely has some creases in it <laughs> if this works out it's gonna be cool it's not a big deal if it doesn't work out I can always order more you know felt or whatever I can get pool table felt or poker table felt this is a waterproof poker table speed felt oh yeah it's plenty big enough but man look at all those tight creases I hate that they ship stuff like this can y'all see the pattern on the camera I don't know if that's picking up, but it's got the hearts and aces, uh, the spades and diamonds and everything in it. Figured that'd be kind of cool. And then with it being waterproof, if anybody accidentally spills their drink on it, it's not gonna run the oak underneath. I also found some brass cup holders. Check these out. Pretty cool, huh? So I need this table to be able to set eight. So we're looking at one on each end and then three down each side. So that's why I went ahead and got these out so I can set it up and start getting an idea of what kind of spacing I need. But as of right now, what I'm thinking is four foot by eight foot, which I think is actually a little bit oversized from what I was finding for uh, oval shaped poker tables. So it'll be a little bit larger. Um, that should give us a room to easily fit eight. All right, I'm actually gonna take this inside for right now and I'm going to hang it in front of a couple of big windows I have in my house. See if it won't start working some of that out over the next day or so. If not, I've got a steam cleaner. I may try to hit it with steam. I'm afraid if I hit it with an iron where the creases are at, it'll just permanently leave the crease in that material. I could probably throw a wet towel over it, maybe iron it, worst case scenario. Man, if they would just send it in a tube, all my vinyl wrap comes in a tube. I don't understand why they can't send this in a tube. So instead of folding it that tight and putting those kind of creases in it, or even if you are gonna fold it, fold it loosely, not I mean, this looks like it was folded and pressed down. Oh, I guess it's just difference in shipping costs. But you know, I would gladly pay a little bit more to get the one that doesn't have these wrinkles in it, wouldn't you? Okay, are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? This looks way too big to be a poker table. So I went through and pulled up the measurements for a casino poker table. Um, foldable poker tables are even smaller. The casino poker table is actually larger. A typical oval shaped Casino poker table it has a length between 92 and 104 inches and a width of 44 inches. So that width would be about four inches more narrow than it is right now. Um, then of course a height of 30 inch, which we already know all dining tables and everything are 29, 30 inches. So that was a given. Now I still need it to fit eight people and I don't want them crammed in. So before I cut anything down, I'm gonna actually draw what the measurements would be for a casino poker table and go through and set all these cup holders in place to get an idea where placement would be and look at it from that point and see if it's better or worse. Taking four inches off the length and four inches off the side is still gonna give us plenty of room for eight people to sit. It looks a little bit more like a poker table instead of just being way oversized. 
So I think that four inches is gonna make all the difference in the world. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, check these out. Real oak lumber. Now they've been kiln dried or whatever to get the moisture out of them so we shouldn't have any shrinkage. So pretty much they just take the tree, split it down, dry them out and plane them. So we've got lots of different widths. They have a whole stack of them for you to go through and choose from. So I picked these three out. There's a little bit of crack on the end, but all the rest of them look great. Now, since my client wants a very industrial steampunk piece, we're not gonna do the typical padded side on it, but instead we're gonna use this inch and a quarter thick oak and just really round the edges. So when your arms are sitting on it, it's not uncomfortable, but it should give it a really cool custom look. Now, I'm not sure how much you can tell on camera, but this has a very rough cut edge, both sides do. It's not a live edge, it's just the way that they cut it at the sawmill, it comes out very rough. Now this is my most narrow piece, so I'm going to take this, put it on my table saw, rip it down so I know that I have square, perfect straight edges on both sides, and then I will cut these other two down to match. If you don't know what a biscuit joint is, I'll just try to cover it real quick. That's a biscuit joint. That goes in there, the glue makes it swell up, but the other one on here, it swells up, has a really strong bond. Now that I got everything screwed and glued in place, I'm just going around and figuring out where I want to put the cup holders. So, what y'all think? Is that good spacing? So still got room for three people. I could put this here and make it symmetrical, but I plan on putting pockets here for your stuff, for your chips or whatever. So we would only have three pockets here and this cup holder would be really close to this cup holder. So I think I'm just gonna do all right-hand cups. Even if they're left-handed, they're holding the cards with the left hand. I don't know, we'll figure it out, but I think that's gonna be the best. This just seems, even though it's more symmetrical, it just seems overcrowded or too much. So I'll just do it this way, and then I'll do a mirror image on the other side, still just leaving seating for eight. Do you like how the table also acts as a workbench? <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> Now that we found where we want to put our cup holders, I'm going to go ahead and remove those. I do have my center point this way, but I don't have my center point this way, and I'm not going to take this whole saw bit and try to eyeball it. I will actually go through and find center, and that's right where I'll put my drill bit. So I have my center this direction, and I'll have my center this direction. So as long as our measurements are on, every single one of these should be in the exact same location all the way around. So if you look at it, they won't be cricket or cattywampus or anything. So my board, I made six inches wide. You see where the three's at right here? I can just set my pencil right down in that three, make a perfect line all the way down. Pretty cool, huh? Do that all the way around. All right, let's start some cutting some holes. That oak is hard, and that's a brand new bit. I may have to just go most of the way through and then flip it over and finish the cut from the back side. All right, with the heat out here and trying to use that drill to do this, it's just cooking that drill. So, so I went and got a little bit bigger one. Let's see what we can do with this. Much better. Let's get these knocked out. I found these DeWalt safety goggles on Amazon. I think they're like nine bucks. These things are serious and they're anti-fog. I mean, they seal up around your eyes. Good. Look like I'm ready to go skiing. Let's do this.
Okay, now my idea is to go through and recess a pocket down in here, just so you can throw your phone or your chips or whatever game you're playing. You can put the pieces down in here if you need to. I'm thinking about that size will be good enough. Still leaves plenty of room to put your arms and stuff to keep it comfortable, but I'm still just winging it, so hopefully it keeps working out. All right, so where I routed out the edge on here, as you can see, I'm starting to put steel in and I'm gonna put steel rivets in here. So it looks all industrial. Tonight, I'm just gonna go around and try to get all these pieces cut. I wanted to router out the top, but I don't have the bit I need. And I've been online trying to find somebody that has the bit in stock. A bunch of places keep saying they have them in stock and that call and have them check the shelf and they don't have it. So, but I think I found a place. I'm gonna go in the morning and get that. Tomorrow, I'll try to get out here and make a little bit more room so I can get this camera back further and get some better angles so you're not looking at my back and you can actually see what I'm doing. Thanks for being patient with me, guys. I really appreciate all of y'all. All right, so I went around and got my metal trim put on. I just tacked it in place right now. I didn't want to do a hard cord weld with it being so close to the wood. I just wanted to get enough tacks that it wouldn't flex or move when I took it off to weld it. So you can see here, I put a carriage bolt in. I just cut out some of the back, ran a carriage bolt, snugged it up, did it on all four ends to hold it in place. That may be enough, but what I'm worried about is this thing slowly working its way down and ending up with a gap right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is go through with some metal tabs and just weld them to the bottom and be able to put screws in. Now you may be asking yourself why I'm not just permanently attaching this to the oak. I'm gonna need this top piece to come off to be able to felt it and the felt to hide underneath it. And later on down the road, if they ever need to replace the felt or anything happens to it, this thing needs to be able to come apart so that they can do that. So I'm trying to make it so this whole top piece bolts onto this bottom plywood. But after I get the tabs welded on here, I'll take this whole metal piece off, weld it up solid, but I got something cool I wanna show you. Where'd it go? So while I was picking up metal today, I found this. They have copper in all kinds of shapes and sizes. They also have brass up there too. I kind of wanted this in brass, but they didn't have it in this size. So I got it in copper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, and they sell this stuff by the inch. So what I'm thinking is cutting off about four inch sections. If I can figure out a way to bend it and kind of cut the end so it looks a little more decorative and have it as just like an end cap to cover these corners with some big steel rivets or something through it. Haven't decided how I want to mount it yet, but I think that'll look really cool. Definitely make it look a little more high end, huh? So cool they had this. All right, what I want to do is recess a pocket down into the top here so that uh, if they're playing poker, they can put their chips in here. I know this family plays a lot of board games too. They bought another piece from me just to store all their board games. They can put their pieces and stuff down in here. Now, I've never done this before, so I'm hoping I don't screw up this oak. <laughs> but I bought a router bit that has a bearing on the top of it. So the idea is the bearing's going to follow my template around here and cut out that hole into the oak. At least that's my understanding how it works. Okay, let's go at it and see. I wish this bit was about half the length, but nobody within 50 miles had one in stock. So I had to get the ones a little bit longer and it's very aggressive. I think I need to raise it just a hair. It looks like the bearing's actually down in the wood. I don't want that. All right, let's give this a try. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Did it just trash my bit? keeps working its way out. This isn't good. Well, this isn't working out great at all. I don't know if it's because the oak's so hard or because it's such a thick board or if that's just made to trim the edge off of something and not actually go down into wood. They're just jerking and jumping all over the place. When you see it was hitting hard enough, it busted my chuck loose on here um, twice. Second plan is to go through and try to figure out a way to cut these out. And then I'll probably shove a piece of oak in from the bottom up 
hopefully get the same results. You don't know till you try. I think the jigsaw method's gonna work out a lot better. Now I'm gonna route, run my router around the edge here and give it a lip just like this. All right, that'll get the basic shape and then I'll go through and work with a sander and then we'll have the matching felt on the top on the bottom here. And like I said, if I don't like it or it's too deep with the felt, I'll just cut out a piece of oak and drop it right down in there. It'll be just fine. I cut that copper down. Now I'm trying to bend it so I can put it on the corners. So I just cut a little relief groove in there. Now I'm going to put it down in the block and hit it with a chisel and see if it'll bend down into that shape. If we can just get it close, then I could probably manipulate it into the angle I need for each corner. You can actually see where the copper's stretching. Let's see how that'll work. Need a little more. Little more. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Give you an idea what that's gonna look like. In case you're wondering, what is that guy doing? So here, and then we're gonna put some steel rivets welded in here. Look kind of decorative. Hopefully it'll come out cool. It's hot. I've been shutting the camera off, not recording a bunch of this, just because if y'all see my other videos, for some reason, when the camera starts overheating, the autofocus shuts off. So I'm gonna shut it down so it doesn't overheat so we can make sure we keep everything in focus. But I'm just gonna go through and make another seven like this, drill holes in it, so we'll have a place to put the steel rivets and get those put in. All right, so I'm gonna start building the legs for this. I guess I shouldn't say legs. I don't wanna put legs on it because there's gonna be eight people sitting at the table. I don't want their knees hitting it. So I'm actually gonna build a long center section to go under the center of the table. That way everybody around it hopefully has leg room. Here's 30 inches. The top is two and a half inches thick. So I take two and a half inches away from that. And I plan on putting a spinning adjustable foot on it just in case they're on tall floor or anything, they'll be able to adjust and level the table out. And then I'm gonna put a two inch thick foot on it that's gonna be adjustable. So we take another two inches off that puts us at 25 and a half. Now I'm starting to think I got gremlins out here. Right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand. <laughs> I don't know where my left hand gloves went. I know a couple of them have burnt up because that seems to be the spot that gets hit with the most sparks and stuff when I'm grinding. So the knuckles, I'll just show you. So the knuckles just burn out. That's where the sparks seem to hit. So that's probably what happened to all my left hand gloves. <laughs> all right, there's one. Just do one more like it. All right, I'm gonna use the super clean degreaser to wipe all this metal down instead of using acetone or paint thinner like I have in the past. The acetone and paint thinner with those welding and sparks going everywhere and grinding and sparks going everywhere is really flammable and dangerous. Don't ask me how I know. But I can sit there with a soaked rag of degreaser and it will not catch on fire. So it's just one less concern that I have to worry about. And it works really great at cleaning this metal off. I want to give a big thank you to Super Clean again for sending me out all these products. They really do work great. I'm not sponsored by them, but I really do like their products. So I appreciate that they help us out. So my buddy you've seen in some other videos is an amazing welder. He's been trying to talk me into buying one of these fireball tool jigs for the longest time. And I finally spent the money and got one. And I am so glad that I did. This thing is amazing. This one not only lines up your 90, but it has brackets on the side so that you make sure your 90 is not like this. 
You can also do 45s. You can also put your 90 in this way. And it's got this huge opening right here so that you could weld down the tip of it so it's not blocking where you need to weld. Pretty cool tool. All right, it's cooking hot out here, so my camera's not wanting to stay on. I just wanted to give you an update of what I'm doing so you don't miss any of it. Just took a threaded shaft and cut it down to two inches. If you're gonna do this and cut it with a grinder, make sure you put the nut on first, then cut it. That way, if any of your threads get boogered up, you can work them back out by taking the nut off. So that way you're not stuck with a cut shaft that you can't, that you can't screw a nut onto without running a tap down it to straighten the threads back out. So just something to keep in mind, just put the nut on first, then cut it, and then work the nut off and it'll straighten the threads out for you. Yeah, I remember earlier in the video, I welded those nuts in here. That's what these are for. So this is gonna screw in here, like so. And then this is gonna weld onto the bottom of this plate. So you'll be able to take this whole plate and spin it to raise or lower to level the table out. And I'll go through and I'll put some pads on this side so it doesn't mess up anybody's floor. Check this out, I found this at the metal supply store. This was in the scrap bin, so I got a couple of them. And just in case you don't know, a lot of these metal supply companies do a lot of CNC cutting, and when they have to cut out a shape, they'll usually throw, like this was a center section of something they cut out for somebody, they'll throw it in a bin for like a dollar a pound. So you can find some really cool stuff that they've cut out with the CNC that they don't need anymore. But I also got this, and my client's last name starts with a W. I figured it'd be cool to put their family initial in the piece. How cool is that? So I've got all this oak left over that I'd like to use from whenever I squared up those uh, rough cut lumber boards. I would like to use it here as a decorative trim, but of course it's very curvy. So, at, so what I'm gonna attempt to try is I went and got some four inch PVC pipe and I have a steam cleaner here and I'm going to try to pump this full of steam for a while with some of those oak pieces in here and see if that will make it where I can curve it into the shape I want. Not sure if it's gonna work or not. Not sure if you can even do that with red oak, but. You don't know unless you try. Now I'm just gonna set this up over here by the side of the garage, really not a good spot to film over there, it's just dark. But all I'm gonna do is put it kind of an angle. I'm gonna drill a hole here and then drill a hole down here. And I'm just gonna stick my steamer in there and just let it fill up. The idea of putting it at an angle is I know it's gonna fill up with moisture and water in here and I want it to drain out. I don't want it to sit there and soak the wood. So I'm gonna put it at just a little bit of an angle, maybe drill another hole just for that stuff to run out and see what happens.
Got a little bit of a split right here on the corner. I think it was just coincidence the way the wood grain went through there. It just gave it a spot to pop up. I tried to put some wood glue on it, put it down. That wasn't holding it. So I went ahead and put some gel super glue on there, crimped it down, and then I'll sand it down smooth. But I think it'll be all right. All the rest of it's coming out pretty good. It definitely takes a talent to be able to do this. If too much pressure, it'll snap. Too slow, it'll snap. Putting pressure too far out, it'll snap. It's like you got to just bend it a little bit each time, getting it down to where you want it. If you start hearing a little bit of crackling or if it starts feeling tough, you just need to steam it some more and just be patient and work it. And then you'll get there. So as you've seen, that drill bit was going dull. I tried to switch to another one, which of course was also dull. So pulled out my drill doctor, hit it a couple times, went right through like butter. Don't throw your drill bits away. Go invest in one of these. Just go through every once in a while and sharpen all your drill bits. All right, I just put satin black paint on everything. Now I'm going to go through with a little bit of mineral spirits and start working it off of the pieces I don't want it. Uh, if you're wondering why I sprayed some of the black paint on these copper pipes is because I want some of the black to set down in the crevices and stuff. That'll give us the illusion of age. So it doesn't look like I just put brand new pipes on here. Now, once I go through with the mineral spirits, I'll go back through with my grinder and hit all the edges and bring some of that metal back. And then I'll probably go through and custom paint some parts. And if I need to add a little bit more aging, I'll go through with my transparent black airbrush. And I've got a rust color for my airbrush. And I'll go through and add a little bit of distressing if I feel like it needs it. Lisa, say hi. Now get out. Or I'm gonna make you clean. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty sure with the oak top and the oak plywood and the size of this base, it would probably be fine just the way it is. But I have this leftover oak that I trimmed off of the top. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of bracing to both sides, just for a peace of mind to know it has a little bit more structure. We're gonna tilt it over this way and set the base on the floor, and then we're gonna put the top on it. Yep. Still screwing it. No. Nope. It ain't. You sure there's not a screw in it? Yeah, there's a screw in it. Oh. <laughs> like I don't remember it being that heavy. I said test your strength. You always make me look bad. I figured I'd make you look bad freaking ego crusher over there. Okay, then we can do it now. Yep. Okay. All right, now the fun part, we gotta do that with this. Should be able to do the same thing, let it grab. Mix equal parts and stir for six minutes. There's some kind of weird chemical reaction with this one. Looks very yellow and bubbling up. Very odd. Oh well, I guess we'll see what happens. I can already tell it's very yellow looking. 
I probably wouldn't recommend that brand. I've used Total Boat before in the past. I bought this from Home Depot. Thought it'd be the same thing. It's supposed to be for stuff like this, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with Total Boat if you're gonna do resin. Just order it off of Amazon if you need to. Yeah, you see it's having some kind of reaction. I don't know what from. I've never used this brand before. I've always used Total Boat and it's crystal clear. This is very amber, which on the steampunk piece, it's all right. But if we were doing something else, it'd be a really bad day. This we can make work. I may even be able to go back through and add just one more thin layer to the top just to get it perfectly smooth because it doesn't look like it's drying very smooth either, like Total Boat does. I don't know if y'all have seen my other videos when I did the drawer fronts and resin. They came out amazing. This is not. We can see that looks clear. That looks clear. That looks very yellow. So odd. Same thing. That one looks kind of yellow. That one's very yellow. That one's clear. That one's yellow. Doesn't make sense because they're all the same. Yeah. I wouldn't use that unless you're just going to do the bar top not do it very thick. Maybe just thin layers is all it's made for. Oh well, it's steampunk so we can make it work, but it's still not very fun. It's stressful, especially as much money as we got in that real oak top. I don't, that's like stretched. Yeah, look, it's like stretched. I didn't stretch it while I was trying to get it decreased. But right, well, I'll, I'll put some staples in it and see if I can't pull it to, I just, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to pull, I don't know if I can pull that out of it, but I'll put some staples in it and see. You pull tight on that side, I'll put that on the side and see if, I think we should try to glue it and use a squeegee. Let's we'll start rolling it. I wish it was like stretchy like felt. Alright, you're just going to have to come over here and hold it like this while I spray down there. And it's going to take a second for it to kind of get sticky. It's kind of dark. See, this is just 3M spray adhesive. I'll put a picture right here. Don't, don't put it out all the way. Just stretch it right there. I can move you all over here. It's getting kind of dark, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. It's pretty much the same thing I did when I vinyl wrapped cars. I'm just using my squeegee with a new felt tip and just slowly working it down. This stuff's almost like a tablecloth I guess you could say it's it's kind of a hard plasticky so there's no stretch to it so it's making a little and I guess that's what makes it waterproof definitely makes it difficult to get all the waves and stuff out of it but this is pretty much the exact same way that I lay down the vinyl wrap like when I wrap my muscle car you just got to take your time work it a little bit at a time now the question is we're going to be able to keep this clean until we deliver it <laughs> That dog hair dust getting on it. You gotta pull it up, see where it's sticking in it. You gotta pull it up. There you go. You want a good amount of pressure when you're doing this. You're almost bending it a little bit. You're putting so much pressure on it. And if you get a little bit of a crease in it, don't try to press real hard over the crease or it's gonna leave a permanent crease in it. You'll see in the material where it creased. So if you get a little bit of a crease, just Pull it back up like you've been seeing me do and start laying it back down. Try to stretch the crease out. Don't try to force the crease into place with this squeegee or it will leave a permanent mark. The oh, crash is averted again. Are you doing something new? It's always a learning experience. You don't know until you try. You can't freak out when stuff doesn't go perfect to plan. As you see, we keep running into problems doing this. It's our first time doing it. It's our first time using materials like this. It's the first time building a poker table. There's always going to be things come up. I know a lot of the other YouTube channels, they cut all the bad stuff out and they make everything look super easy and anybody can do it and they don't show all the problems they run into. I do. The biggest thing to take away from it is how you deal with it when a problem arises. You can't get all upset and flustered because then it'll just compound and it'll, you'll start getting more frustrated and messing more stuff up. Just take a breath, see what you can do to fix it, and try to go at it a different way.
Or if you're Emily, just, you know, go and drink and deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> Sometimes you do. You just got to step away from it until an idea comes and then go back at it. If you're really frustrated and you're tired and that's when you'll start messing stuff up. Sometimes, even though it's hard, it's hard for me sometimes because it's sitting there on my mind nonstop. Sometimes you just gotta make yourself step away and come at it with a fresh set of eyes. All right, I'm still gonna staple it just in case. So plus I got this new fancy electric stapler. I wanna staple some stuff. You wanna play with your fancy toys? Yeah. That's another thing she just brought up. We're not going to take the screws and just put them back into the top because there's a chance that when you run the screw through this, it'll wind up and tear a hole in it. So I'm going to have to go through and poke holes where all the screws are at to make sure that our screw, the threads on the screw don't grab this material and either pull a strand out of it or wad it up or tear it. So I may even take like my soldering iron if I have to and I'll burn holes in the material where the holes are at that come up from the bottom. But don't just try to screw through this because it will, I, more than likely, it's going to screw it up. How fast do you think I can go? I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> What'd you let go for? Because. You may mess safety. up. All right, this thing's already worth its money. You know how bad my hand would be hurting right now if I was squeezing that big T50 staple gun this many times? And my whole idea was to make this where if they ever needed to change the felt, it wouldn't be too bad to take apart. The top comes apart in three pieces, just in case they ever need to ever need to change it. All right, we'll end up taking this back off tomorrow. I'll poke the holes through it, and then I got to finish welding up the metal ring that goes around the bottom, custom paint it, then it'd be done. Big project. Probably way underquoted it. <laughs> Thank you.